By contemplating the pierced side of Christ, we can understand the starting point of this encyclical letter, God is Love. That's the name of the encyclical in which, uh, from which I'm reading. It is there that this truth can be contemplated. It is from there that our definition of love must begin. So in order to truly understand love, you have to understand Christ crucified because that's the, that is the pinnacle of love, is, is our Lord and his perfect love for us. Was, can we love God without seeing him? So if we've never seen God, how can we love him? Uh, Father DeMay had an interesting uh, comment about that. He said, well, of course, what is the first question of Baltimore Catechism? Who made you? God made you, and why did he make you? To know him, to love him, and to serve him in this world, and to be happy with him forever in heaven. So the first one is to know him. It came before love. Well, why? Well, you can't, know, you can't love something you don't know. So Father Domingue says, do you love my grandmother? <laughs> no, you don't. How could you? You don't even know her. So that's the point. If you don't know God, how can you love him? So we're called first to know him, to try to understand him as best we can, so that we can love him. And then when we love him, we want to serve him. So it's not a servitude like a slave, but as our Lord said, that we're his friends. So we're going to serve him, not as in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, because we love him. We know him, and then we love him, and we want to serve him. And then we will be happy with him forever in heaven. He never said anything about being happy on earth. It's not a part of the deal. So can we love God without seeing him? Well, now we can see him, because our Lord took flesh. And there was even a heresy uh, in the early church that you shouldn't have icons because that's idolatry. Well, it's not. The church said, no, it isn't because our Lord gave us that image to love and wants us to love him. And it want, wants us to be able to visualize. He knows he made us. He knows us. So he knows that we are visual creatures and we need something like that. It helps to simulate our love. Okay, no one has ever seen God, so how can we love him? Moreover, love cannot be commanded. It is ultimately a feeling that is either there or not, nor can it be produced by the will. Scripture seems to reinforce the first objection when it says, If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God who he hasn't seen. So it, it makes it easier for us to love God when we love our neighbor, because at, since we're all made in the image that of God. Love is not a feeling. Love is not an aspect of our feelings. Love is an aspect of our will. Because think about that. If God is love, well, God isn't just a bundle of emotions just sitting up there, you know, giggling and, you know, watching the Lifetime Network and, and, um, and, and you know, getting all gushy when we do something good. He, it's a force of his will. And through that force of his perfect and infinite will, he loves perfectly and infinitely. So, again, love is essentially a matter of the will and not of feelings. Then St. Paul talks about that, um, how love is the first and foremost thing, that faith is, um, is gone. After death, faith is gone. There's no faith after death. There's, uh, we know everything. So there's no reason, there's no need to believe, there's no hope after we're gone. Only love prevails. Uh, if I should speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have charity... I sound like a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And if I have prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge and I'm smart and he goes on, um, and even if I deliver my body to be burned but I don't have charity, it doesn't profit me anything. Charity is patient and kind. It does not envy. It is not pretentious. It is not puffed up. It is not ambitious. It is not self-seeking. It is not provoked. It thinks no evil. It does not rejoice over wickedness but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. So, obviously, those things, they have to stem from our will because we are not naturally inclined to those things. With concupiscence and with our natural tendency to, to the human aspect of ourselves, we have to fight those things with our will, and it only can be improved through practice. It's just like exercise, just like football practice. You have to go and go and go. You can't just not do anything, lay on the couch all day, and then expect to be you know, football star. Um, charity is the virtue by which we love God above all things for his own sake and our neighbor as ourselves for the love of God. So we don't love our neighbor necessarily for the sake of the neighbor. That's a natural virtue. 
We love an, our neighbor because of our love for God. And we love God because he deserves it, because he's naturally lovable.